After what seems like an extraordinary long wait, Spider-Man is back in the form of Miles Morales. Yes, this is my review for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Let's talk about this movie. Welcome back to the channel everyone and welcome to this here review for the latest Spider-Man offering from Sony Across the Spider-Verse, um, the sequel to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse Miles Morales animated movie from Sony, like I said um, Yes, finally we get the sequel here running at 2 hours and 20 minutes with a PG rating um, brought to us, written by Phil Lord, Christopher Miller and Dave Callahan, and directed by Yaquin Dos Santos, Kemp Powers and Justin K. Thompson. So, um, I'm going to try and not talk about spoilers at the beginning of this review. Then I'll get to a point where I will talk spoilers. So, that first Spider-Man film, Miles Morales one, um, I loved it. I love Miles Morales as a character, Brian Michael Bendis, who created and wrote the character of Miles Morales for the Ultimate Spider-Man comics after the death of Peter Parker, created a fabulously rich character. And I was so glad that he got even an animated movie. And that first film blew me away. So, does this film offer up anything new or is it trudging old ground? We, you know, like many a sequel does. Anyway, you'll be happy to know that, no, this sequel is as fresh, as vibrant, as fun as the first one. It's as quick-witted, it's as fast-paced. Um, this film is a blast. Two hours and 20 minutes was longer than what I expected, but the time just flows by. The film itself, we get a fantastic action sequence at the beginning. Um, we don't even get a title card for this film until about 15 minutes in. And then it's not until about the 45 minute mark that we're actually uh, given, a, you know, getting into the story. It's all character build up before that and, and all reintroductions of different characters. And it's just fantastic. And, you know, it, the film starts off more of a the perspective of Gwen Stacy than what it does Miles Morales. It does like all it gives you all her origin, this sort of a thing that happened with her. And if you remember that scene at the end of the first one where Gwen Stacy came back through the, the portal above uh, Miles's bed, um, this is in this film, but we come to find out it's actually some considerable amount of time has passed. And it's at that 45 minute mark that we get this scene, that scene. and. and Miles has grown somewhat, grown as a person, grown physically, um, and has become a better Spider-Man. Um, he comes to learn that there is this sort of secret society of Spider-Men from all different um, universes that have come together, but he hasn't been invited into it, and, and this kind of gets to him a bit. So thusly, he follows Gwen through one of these portals to find out why, and the story progresses like that. Obviously, we have his enemy in it, who we've seen in the trailers, being um, Spot. And he is the big bad of the film, but not only that, another antagonist is in the form of Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099. I don't really want to say any more about the story than that. The film does have some surprise cameos in it. Um, yeah, and, and nice nods to comic book lore and all this sort of a thing. And like I said, it's as vibrant, fast-paced as that first one. It's as good as the first one. Yes, it hasn't lost anything. It truly is. And obviously the film does end um, to be continued. It is a two-parter, and that is no secret. But also some old friends return at the end also. The voice cast in this film, obviously Miles Morales is again voiced by Shami Moore. Um, Gwen Stacy, Hayley Steinfeld, Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099, Oscar Isaac as he was at the end of the last film, Jake Johnson returns as Peter B. Parker, 
Andy Samberg return, well, not some return, he appears as Ben Riley, aka the Scarlet Spider, and fantastic. And there's other characters in the mix and all this sort of a thing. And it truly is rich storytelling. That's what I love about this film. And like the first one, this is written by and directed in such a way that it comes across better than so many live action movies. It's so vibrant. It's so you could see it as a live action movie. Just the the, the camera angles used in the animation and all this. And that's the other thing, the animation, it's all different. Um, each world they visit is a different animation style. And that character, like in the first one, retains their animation style in the world that they visit and the worlds that they visit that animation style is the main thing with them as the visitor in a different animation style and it looks superb it looks photographic it looks I don't it just looks fantastic this film was spot on now I do want to get into discussing some of the nitty-gritty spoilers about this film so what I suggest you do now is just cut off now that's why there's a warning up step away go away watch the film come back and then give me your thoughts on it so let's delve into it a little bit deeper okay so now we got that out of the way if you're still hanging around you've either seen the film you know what it's about you know what happens you don't care or you don't care about spoilers whatever it may be but yeah so this film here first of all the cameos in it um, let's talk a bit about the cameos. So obviously we have the woman from the shop in Venom. Um, we have the Spot go through one of his holes and he appears in that universe. What we come to find out about Spot is that um, he was there at the destruction of the quantum acceleratory type thing in the other film. And this has caused him to become the person that he is. And he, he, he embraces this power and... When he gets a bit more of it, it enables him to be a link between all these different dimensions. His spots just don't open up like a wormhole for him to go through in his own world. He can utilise these spots to get through into other universes. Um, and in this, he pokes his head out into the universe of Venom. Yes, with the woman in the shop. Um, no Venom in sight or anything like that, but it's a great scene. It really is. Right, and then obviously we get... Brian, um, Donald Glover, sorry, Brian Glover, um, Donald Glover, Brian Glover, am I getting my names mixed up, Donald Glover, got Danny Glover, Brian Glover, Donald Glover from um, Community, he who was Han Solo, he was in Spider-Man Homecoming um, as the uncle of Miles Morales, um, yeah, he's in it, he's in a, in, 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 in a, in a cell, essentially, um, so it makes that kind of real life. And we also get Andrew Garfield in a cameo. But it's not filmed for this. It's actually a scene from The Amazing Spider-Man um, 2 with the death of Gwen Stacy's um, father, the police captain. Um, or was that Spider-Man 1? That was Spider-Man 1, wasn't it? I was Spider-Man 1. I'm getting my films mixed up. Anyway, he's there. So that's really nice. Um, all the comic book nods, you know. Ben Riley, the way he's drawn like a comic book character, just fantastic. And the film is so deep in its characters. Every character in this film is well written. Every character has depth. The one thing I didn't particularly like about it was Spider-Man 2099 playing as an antagonist. I get it, but what I didn't like is that I really love the character of Spider-Man 2099. And I'd love to see a film of his own. And having him set up here more as a bad guy I didn't necessarily like I'm hoping that within the next film um, he has a turnaround and he has like a redemption arc and becomes more of a good guy and I'm sure that's the sort of road that they will take with him but that is me nitpicking because this film is as good as that first movie without a doubt without a lie it is on par with that first film um, as the film progresses it kind of gets darker and darker in tone um, until the end and we're almost given an Empire Strikes Back-esque ending to this film where you've got Miles Morales in trouble Miles Morales chained up at the hands of um, 
well, himself, another version of himself, because he gets sent home, but only he gets sent to the wrong universe because of the DNA of the spider bite, and it comes out that the spider had come from a different universe, the one that had bit him, and thusly he gets sent there, where the Miles Morales of that world is actually the Prowler, and he's face to face with him himself, and then you have Gwen Stacy, and I knew this was coming, I knew this was coming, she's getting the old gang back together with some new friends that she's made in this uni in, in this film but back is Spider-Man Noir and, and all that sort of a thing so it's great we're going to go into the next one we're going to have Nick Cage back as Spider-Man Noir which will be fantastic you know this was a solid solid film there's so much to take in so much to digest and I've just finished watching it I've just got back from watching it but wow um I should have slept on it before doing this review. I should have processed it all, but I had a blast. I had a fantastic time. It was really, really good. This film here is definitely going to be in my top 10 for the year and probably very high up ranked within that top 10. This is a superb film. Okay, Sony doesn't get it right with the live action Marvel stuff, but here with the first one, they are on point without a doubt um hats off to them i cannot wait for part three how long do i have to wait for the third one um anyway let me know your thoughts on this film down below in the comments and i'll see you on the next one take care all and goodbye